Welcome! In this video, I'd like to take some applications of Pythagoras' theorem, which we learned in geometry class early on in my, my book, in Geometry Volume 1, and uh, apply it to some results about circles and tangent lines to circles. Now, we happen to study geometry in our second semester, and that appears in my Volume 2 of Geometry book, um, which you can find at uh, www.lulu.com. Just search on my name, Tanton, in geometry, you'll find these books. There's a little self-plug, forgive me. But yeah, but I'll talk about how Pythagoras actually relates to results about tangent lines to circles. Uh, this comes up in a couple of places um, in mathematics, and it's just good to spill it out here in a little video. All right, here goes. First of all, I need to do one little result. Um, I'm going to ask the following little curious question. Here's a straight line, not very straight, and here's a point P not on the line. And my question is, what's the shortest way for me to get from P to anywhere on that line? I don't care where I go. Now, when I ask this question, students, most, say, most students say, just go straight down. Do, 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 do. And I'm a little bit obnoxious, and I draw literally straight down. And it turns out what they really mean is that they think the shortest path from P to the line would be actually one that comes straight across at 90 degrees. So then the question comes, if this is A inches here along the southern line, and B inches here along this, this um, dotted line, how do we know that A is really shorter than B? Well, the answer is Pythagoras' theorem. For example, if I just give this a uh, third side of this triangle I see here, the name x, for example, Pythagoras says that b squared is a squared plus x squared. That is, it's telling me that b squared is a squared plus some more stuff. So that tells me that b squared is bigger than a squared, and if I take square roots and everything's in the world of positive numbers, b is indeed longer than a. In fact, if I play this game, no matter what other path I choose, if I call this c, by the same argument, I could say that c squared has to be bigger than a squared, therefore c is bigger than a. Or if I did a path over here, this length is going to be bigger than a. So believing there is a shortest path to begin with, um, we've just proven that that shortest path has to be the one that comes at a perpendicular line segment. Great. So a little application of Pythagoras' theorem is the shortest path from a point to a line is along a perpendicular segment. Great. Now let's get to some circles results. So the first circle result is, is this one. If I have a circle, Ooh, that's not bad. And I have a tangent line to a circle. That's a line that just comes along and just kisses the line. Because apparently the word tangent comes from the Greek word to kiss, to just touch. Um, here's our first result. Here's a point, uh, here's the center of the circle, and let me draw the radius to that point of contact. Now, clearly, this dotted line is shorter than any other line from the center of the circle to the tangent line. Because, why? Well, this is radius r then this red line is r plus some extra stuff. It's longer than r. This red line is r plus some extra stuff. It's longer than r. This red line is r plus some extra stuff. It too is longer than r. So the line from the center of the circle to the point of contact is clearly the shortest. But over yonder, we just prove that the shortest path from a point to any line is the one that makes a 90 degree angle to it. So here's our first tangent result. It's the radius tangent theorem that the radius well I'll just draw this pictorially that the radius and a tangent line in a circle if they actually are tangent are perpendicular so a tangent line and a radius at the point of contact are perpendicular great that comes up a lot in mathematics there it is it's really a consequence of Pythagoras theorem here's my second radius uh, tangent result that comes up in a lot of mathematics Look at that terrible, terrible handwriting. I do get complaints about my handwriting, I apologize. I don't seem to be doing anything about it though. Hmm. All right, that's about one tangent. Now let's now clear the board and talk about two tangents. So here's a circle, let me draw it again. And this time let me choose a point outside of the circle and draw its two tangent lines that come along and just touch the circle. If that's one point of contact, and this is a second point of contact. Now, if I ask my students, is there anything interesting going along on, long here? Uh, most would say it probably feels like that the two, these two tangent segments are the same length. That this is a inches long, and that's b inches long. It feels like that a should equal b. So the question is, can we prove that? Ooh, well, we don't have much to go on. Um, given there's not much to go on, uh, I might as well just do something. And the something I might do here is at least identify the center of the circle. Um, and it feels maybe appropriate to draw radiuses, radii, radiodes. All right, there's two obvious radiuses, and draw a lot more radius, but these seem to be the ones to be relevant. 
But, 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 we have just proved by the radius tangent theorem that a radius and tangent make 90 degree angles. All right, so we have this picture like this. So is there any way to prove that A equals B in this picture? Knowing that's a radius and that's also a radius. Well, you might be stuck again, but after a little bit of thinking and, and waiting for some brilliant epiphany, you might also think to draw in this line. And I don't know how long it is, it's given a name length, I don't know, W, because I don't know what it is. W is a good name for a variable. I don't know why we insist on choosing X all the time. All right, so we've got a triangle with W, R, and A in it, and a triangle with W, R, and B in it. Well, um, you might want to talk about similar triangles right now, but you don't need to. It's really as a consequence of Pythagoras theorem. What's going on? Well, by Pythagoras, a squared plus r squared is w squared. And b squared plus r squared is also w squared. So a squared is w squared minus r squared. b squared is also w squared minus r squared. So we conclude from this that a squared is b squared. And uh, taking square roots, since everything is positive, we know that that's going to force that a equals b. So that gives us our two tangents theorem. Two tangents theorem. That's the theorem, by the way, THM, that which says that if ever I have a, an ice cream cone or a megaphone or I don't know, a hat like this, that this tangent segment is congruent to that tangent segment. Or if in America, that tangent segments, those two tangent segments are congruent. That's it. Now the two little results that come from geometry and are really immediate consequences of Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, and it's kind of good to see that. Here's a little exercise, just for fun. I'm going to draw a circle again. Oops, if I can get my pen. And what I'm going to do about the circle is draw a polygon, but I'm going to draw a purple side, followed by a green edge, followed by a purple edge, followed by a green edge, and I'll make it, ooh, that's meant to be tangent, sorry, followed by a purple edge, and followed by a tiny green edge. Not very good, but each of these edges is just tangent to the circle. So I did this with crayon. Oops, very bad picture, beg your pardon. And here's my question. Did I use more purple than I did green crayon when I drew this picture? Or did I use more green than I did purple when I drew this picture? Or is it impossible to tell? It depends. Possible to tell. So I'm very uh, careful about my crayon use. Should I use more purple than green? Should I use more green than purple? Or is it just depends on what I actually drew? Maybe it can go either way. So there's an interesting conundrum. Which color did I use more of when I drew a polygon with six sides, alternating the sides and the colors? In fact, I have this question again for eight-sided polygons and 20-sided polygons and 25-sided polygons and 17-sided polygons. There's a lot to think about here. So draw me a 17-sided polygon, alternate purple and green, which crayon color did I use more of, or is, does it depend on what I actually end up drawing? So there's a nice mystery that um, might or might not be uh, connected to the two theorems I have on the right in red. All right, thanks so much.